Hey guys, what's up? In this video, I'm sharing how I created the flat sketch of a trench coat. Um, yeah, that one. So yep, let's get started. I'm starting on an A3 size artboard in Adobe Illustrator. And the very first thing I'm gonna do is paste my template for drawing flat sketches. The exact same one that I have shown you guys how to draw before. It's super, super simple and takes just five minutes to create. So I'm gonna link the video above if you wanna check it out. Now, I'm gonna begin by selecting the template, then coming up here to opacity and reducing it to 40% so that it looks dim like this. I'm then going to open up my layers panel on the right and since my template is on layer 1, I'm going to double click the word layer 1 and rename it to template. I'm also going to lock it by clicking here. Then let's make a new layer by clicking on this plus icon and as you can see layer 2 has appeared. Let's now close the layer panel and get to drawing. The first tool I'm going to use is the pen tool. I can select it from here on the toolbar or I can just hit P on my keyboard. If you guys are new to the pen tool, I recommend you watch this tutorial first. Now, let's zoom into the top half of the template and before we start, come up here and make sure that the fill is white and the stroke is black. Then begin the drawing with just the left half of the garment. Once that is done, I'm going to draw the left side collar of my coat. But for this, I'm switching to the direct selection tool by hitting the shortcut A on my keyboard. Alternatively, you can come to the toolbar and choose the tool from here. But guys, life gets much easier if you learn the shortcuts. So preferably write this down somewhere if you can. So with the direct selection tool, I'm going to highlight just this area of the bodice that I drew because I want to make a copy of just this part of the line. To make a copy, use the shortcuts Command C and Command F and a copy will fall exactly in front of the original, as you can see here. So I'm going to switch back to my pen tool to draw out the collar by connecting my pen tool to this line. And that's it for the collar. Let's zoom in to make a few alterations. First. With the direct selection tool, click on the anchor point that forms the pointy corner of the collar. And can you see a tiny dot appear? If you click and drag that dot a bit inward, the pointy end begins to get blunt. And that's what I want. I'm also going to do the same thing at this pointy corner. Then I'm going to draw a line like so forming a seam. And let's move on to the sleeve. Once again, to start my sleeve, I'm going to highlight just this line so I can make a copy of it. So let's hit Command C and Command F. Then with the pen tool again, I'm drawing a line connecting to it like so. Go on and draw out the sleeve. I'm additionally adding a line along the length like this. And this is where I start getting into details, guys. I'm going to draw a wrist strap for the sleeve. Start by selecting the rectangle tool and drawing a shape like so. Draw one more rectangle like this which will become a strap loop and one more like this which will become a buckle. For the buckle, remove the white fill, then increase the stroke width to 5 and then expand the shape by going to object and expand. Hit OK. And expanding basically will make this rectangle's line an editable object. So with it still highlighted, hit D on your keyboard and doing that will automatically convert this object into having a white fill with a black stroke. How cool is that? Definitely write that shortcut down somewhere because it will come in handy later. Next, I'm going to choose the ellipse tool and draw a circle like so, forming the holes on my strap. Give it a black fill and copy paste one more circle like this. And back with the rectangle tool, draw a tiny rectangle like this to finish off the prong of the buckle. Let's zoom in so that we can get into the details. And with the direct selection tool, if I click on just these two corners, these tiny circles show up at the corner again. The same ones that we saw at our pointy collar corners. So again, if I click and drag them inwards, the sharp edges start to become round and blunt like so. 
And this looks fine, so let's zoom back out. I'm also going to add a line like so. And let's also increase the width of the strap a bit more to the sides by clicking and dragging the right side first and then the left. Now with the pen tool, I'm going to draw out the lines that will become my stitch lines. So I'm adding one like this, also here, and for my loop. Now highlight all the stitch lines, open the stroke panel and reduce the weight to 0.3. And the key is to come here and select dashed line, which will basically make your highlighted lines look like stitches. My settings are two for the dash length and one for the gap length that falls between dashes. Now all the stitch lines created are overlapping in all the wrong places at the moment. So what we need to do is highlight just this area with the selection tool and right click, go to arrange and send to back. And we're good to go. I'm then going to highlight everything, right click and group. So grouping will allow one effect to be applied to the entire group at once. So select it, come up here to effect, warp and choose arc. And let me move this to the side so you can see. The current style is at horizontal under arc, which is what we need. But the bend of the arc is too much. So I'm going to reduce it to about minus six and hit OK. Now you'll see that when I place it on my coat's sleeve, the slight bend makes it look more realistic. And we're done with the wrist strap. Now let's do some more work on the upper bodice. Start with adding a line like so, then come to the variable width profile and choose width profile 4. This will convert the line from being a plain straight line to one which is thick at one end and tapered at the other thereby looking like a fabric fold. I'm gonna then start drawing out the main stitch lines on the body. Start at the sleeve hem like so with a pen tool. And here's a quick trick. If you highlight this line, then choose the eyedropper tool and simply touch an existing stitch line with it. The highlighted line automatically becomes that stitch line. Like how cool is that guys? We will be using the eyedropper tool many times later, so remember what it does, all right? Also draw in a stitch line here, and next let's do the collar. Now the collar is such a unique shape and we need to get the stitch lines perfect. So I'm gonna first double click on the collar. And what this double click does is it puts the collar in isolation mode. That means that everything else on my artboard is grayed out and my mouse cannot touch them. So let's start by making a copy of it by hitting Command C and Command F. Then use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move the copy a bit to where your stitch lines might fall. Also remove the fill. Now I don't need this part of the line, do I? So I'm going to right click on the eraser tool to get my scissors tool. With this tool, I'm going to click on my line here and here. And clicking on these points will cut the line into two parts. I'm going to click on the part that I don't need and hit delete. Now we have a potential stitch line. So once again, I'm going to highlight this line and use the eyedropper tool to go and click on an existing stitch line so that this one can become a stitch line too. Then let's zoom in and use the direct selection tool to make a few adjustments. And the stitch line for the collar is done. So let's get out of isolation mode. For this, double click anywhere in the background and we are back. Let's go create a stitch line here as well. And yes, that's the eyedropper tool again. Okay, so the upper bodice is done for now. So I'm going to start drawing out the lower bodice. Pen tool again, draw out a shape like so and send it to the back. Let's also extend the side out by a bit. And yup, this looks okay. I'm now going to draw a seam that runs from top to bottom, like so. Since the seam is lying over the collar, select the parts of the collar that need to come to the front and right click, go to arrange and bring to front. I'm going to end the left half by drawing a stitch line at the hem. So guys, now group the entire left half together. Then make a copy, but this time hit Command C and Command B to send the copy exactly behind the original. Then right click the copy, 
go to transform and reflect. Make sure that vertical is selected and hit OK. Now drag your copy to the right side while holding down shift so that the copy moves in a perfectly straight line. Once you're done dragging, it should look like this. Now just have a look to see that everything is proportionate. For me, I would like it better if the waist was a bit thinner. So I'm going to highlight these points with the direct selection tool and adjust them like so. We also definitely need to lift the collar points. So highlight both holding down shift and move them upwards with your arrow keys. Let's zoom out and have a look again. And yes, I think we are good to go. So from now on, I do not need my original template anymore. So I'm going to open my layers panel and next to layer one is this eye icon, which I'm going to click to turn the visibility of this entire layer off. I now have just the coat left. So the next step is to draw the inner back of the garment, starting at the collar. With my direct selection tool, I'm going to highlight this curved line and this curved line. Then make a copy with Command C and Command F. And I'm going to just move it up here so I can see it better. Now with the pen tool, I'm going to draw the inner back of my collar like so. Once it has become a closed shape, I'm going to send it to the back and place it like so. Now remember how we got into isolation mode to draw the stitch lines for the front collar? I'm going to do that again for the back collar. Double click the shape, enter isolation mode, add stitch line and exit isolation mode. I'm also going to go ahead and draw in a hanger loop like so with the pen tool. I'm then adding two pleat lines like this and changing the variable width for them to width profile 4 before sending them to the back. To complete the back of the coat, draw in one final rectangle like this and change the fill to grey and send it to the back. So the coat looks like this so far. Now for convenience sake, I'm going to reduce the size of the artboard to better fit my CAD by clicking on the artboard icon here, then selecting the double-ended arrows that appear at the sides of my artboard to resize it. And yeah, this is much better. So let's get to drawing the waistband. Start with a shape like so. And just like we drew the buckle at the wrist strap, draw one here as well. Round the corners, expand it and hit D. Then draw in the holes on the belt. Make copies of it and finish off the prong like so. Now I'm going to draw the leftover part of my belt and I'm making it sort of tucked inside the belt just to, you know, be a bit fancy. Yeah, like that. Now group all the parts of the belt together. Then let's put the entire belt in isolation mode by double clicking it so that we can work on it better. In isolation mode, the parts of the belt will no longer be grouped together, making it super easy to work with. I'm going to start with stitch lines first on the leftover bit. For this, I'm actually making a copy by hitting Command C and Command F. Then while the copy is still highlighted, I'm going to use the eyedropper tool and touch an existing stitch line. So you can't see it, but the copy has now turned into a stitch line. I'm going to select the direct selection tool and edit the line and place it properly. Then make a copy of that as well and place it like this because we're going to be making a double needle stitch. In the same way, I'm going to add in stitches for the rest of the belt. I'm also going to create belt loops for my belt. So draw a rectangle like so, add stitches again, and place them like this. And that's it for the belt guys. This whole thing will turn back into a group once we exit isolation mode. And again, to exit, double click anywhere on the background. Next, I'm going to add buttons and buttonholes to my coat. And I'm actually going to create them from scratch so that you guys can make them too. First, the buttonhole. Start by selecting the Type tool, which looks like this on the toolbar. Or you can hit T on your keyboard. 
Click on the screen and type the alphabet V. The key here is to find a V in a font that looks like this because later it's going to become part of a zigzag stitch that will form your buttonhole. I'm using Arial Black in regular. I'm going to stretch it out a bit and then outline it by right clicking and choosing Create Outlines. And when we outline it, it will basically make this V an editable object. Next, I'm going to choose my rectangle tool and draw a box like this. Remove any fill and stroke that it might have and send it to the back behind your V. So why did I do this? Do you guys see the part of the V that falls just inside the box I drew? That is me defining my repeat. So in a few moments, this area alone will repeat like so to form my zigzag line. But for now, highlight both the V and the box below, then come up here to open the brush definition panel and click on new brush. Choose pattern brush and hit OK. These settings look OK, but additionally, let's choose auto centered for this one. Tick approximate path and pick tints here in case you need to later change the color of the zigzag line and hit OK. Now let's test out the zigzag stitch brush that we created. Draw a line like so, then come up here and change it to the brush that you just made. And this is perfect, so let's go create the buttonhole shape. First draw a rectangle, then add a circle. If it's not aligned, you can come up here to Vertical Align Center to get them both in a straight line. Come to the Pathfinder tool here and click Unite. This will combine both shapes into one. And it's starting to look like a buttonhole, right? All that's left to do is remove any fill and change the brush to the zigzag brush that we created. Also reduce the stroke width to about 0.2 pixels and we are done. Expand your shape guys. This is so that the thickness of the zigzag line remains the same when you reduce the size later and place it on the coat. Now let's get to the buttons. The buttons are just a bunch of circles guys. You got this. Draw a big one, add a smaller one, and add even smaller ones at the center. Let's also zoom in and draw some thread running through these holes. And this looks okay. I'm also going to group and expand my button. So let's go place this whole thing on the coat. And done. My next move is to create pockets for the coat. Start with a rectangle, add stitch lines, convert them with the eyedropper tool, copy paste a button and group the entire pocket together. Now place it like so and make a copy for the right side as well. Now on the right, it's currently falling over the belt, but luckily we had grouped our entire belt together so all you have to do is right click the belt and choose a range and bring to front. Next, I'm going to modify the hemline a bit. This will be useful for you if you have a specific lining inside that you want to show in a flat sketch. Highlight this panel, then hit the plus key on your keyboard to bring up the add anchor point tool and go ahead and add two anchor points, one here and one here. Now with the direct selection tool, Click and drag the corner like so. Also adjust this handle. Then draw a line like this. It now looks like a part of the hem has been lifted up outward. Let's zoom in and correct the stitch lines that we drew and draw in additional details that show the lining. And with that, we are done with all major detailing guys. So go ahead and group your entire sketch together. The next few steps will refine the sketch into looking professional AF and we're going to start by giving this entire coat a thick black border. How I like to do this is to use my group selection tool to highlight every major part that forms a part of the border of my coat. So the sleeves, the body, the collar, even the belt, etc. Then make a copy by hitting Command C 
and command shift V this time. This will place a copy of these parts exactly over the original. Now hold down shift and move them in a straight line to your right. Next open your pathfinder and unite all shapes into one by hitting unite. Now let's go make the outline thicker. So open the stroke panel, increase the stroke width to 5. Also come here and additionally choose round cap and round corner so that in case you have any suspicious pokey lines sticking out, they round out. Then drag it back to your main sketch and place it at the back. And we're slowly starting to get the professional look, huh? But we're not done until we create shadows. So I'm going to open up my layers panel, create my new layer 3 for the shadows and lock the other two layers. Let's zoom in and before we begin with the pen tool, remove any stroke and pick a light grey for your shadow colour. Then start drawing in shapes like so. These represent wrinkles at the waist. Add some at the sleeve, some at the collar and go on in this manner. Once done, highlight everything and as you can see, my shadows are now solid colours that fall over the garment outline that I had drawn. So I'm going to come here to transparency and change the transparency mode to darken. This will allow the black outlines of my garment underneath to come through my shadows. Another thing I like to do is to zoom out and then here and there change the opacity percentage of some of the shadows, making a few lighter and a few darker. This will add a lot of dimension to your sketch. Also draw in a grey shadow for this flap of fabric. And with that, your black and white technical sketch is done guys. You can stop right here. But if you are feeling a little extra and want to add a pattern to this coat, then I'm also going to show you how to create a quick checkered pattern followed by a few more adjustments that we will have to make to the shadows to suit the new pattern better. Start by creating a simple white square with no stroke. Then create a copy of the square by hitting command C and command F. Except now squeeze the copy from the right side inwards to make it a stick like so. Then change the color of the stick to grey. Now copy paste the stick seven times. That's command C and command F F F F F F F. Then drag one stick here holding down shift. Then highlight all the sticks. Open your align panel and choose horizontal distribute center. This will distribute all eight stick lines with even space between them. Group them all together and squeeze them together like so. Then reduce the opacity to 40% and also create another copy, placing it like this. I'm also going to add a set here and another set here. Now guys, group everything together. Then reduce the size to the size that you want the check to be on your garment. And then drag and drop it into your swatches panel. Now how I like to add AOPs to my garments is to first draw a large shape like so. Then add the AOP I want onto this shape by clicking on it in my swatch panel. From now you will see me constantly switch between hitting A on my keyboard for the direct selection tool and hitting I for the eyedropper tool. I'll show you how. Hit A and select the lower half of your skirt first. Now hit I and click on the large swatch. The eyedropper tool you guys already know will change any highlighted shape to whatever it touches. Then with A again, I'm going to select the upper left half and with I select the swatch. Okay, now what I'm going to do is move the swatch a bit like this and then carry on transferring the pattern to the right half of the garment. So I moved the swatch a bit like that so that when the pattern transfers, the left half's pattern and the right half's pattern will not seamlessly blend in with each other and this will give your drawing a realistic look. 
Now for the sleeve, I'm going to move the swatch again. Except this time, I'm bringing it closer to the sleeve and aligning it with the tilt or the diagonality of the sleeve. Now hit A to select the sleeve and hit I to select the swatch. Repeat the same for the other sleeve. And we are officially done with the swatch, so I'm going to delete it. For the collar, I'm going to hit A to select the left half and then hit I to copy the right sleeves pattern. Do the opposite for the right side collar and finish the middle section by giving it straight placed checks like that on the body. And this is finally what it looks like. So now that we have a checkered pattern added, I'm going to go ahead and give my entire sketch a few finishing touches. Start by highlighting the major parts of your coat. The collar, the upper two sections, the lower two sections, then increase the stroke width to 1.5 so that we can see these sections a bit more clearly without the checkered pattern hazing it. I'm also going to make the inner portions of my coat a darker grey so that it stands apart from my checkered pattern. The same goes for the shadows. I'm going to darken a few here and there so that they don't blend into the grey of the pattern. To finish off my shadows, I'm also drawing a few at the wrist strap, the belt, the side seam and the collar. And we are done guys, your coat is now ready and the close up looks like this. So I hope that was useful. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon.